Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you all how to paint this pretty cottage landscape by the sea. I hope you enjoy watching this one and you want to paint along. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another painting tutorial. If you're new, my name's Joni Young and I'm going to be showing you all step by step how to paint this pretty acrylic landscape today. I'm working on an 11 by 14 primed and stretched canvas. You can paint yours on any size canvas you like. And I've also got the following colors. I've got them here and I'll have a full list of all the colors and brushes I'm using in the description below this video. Starting off with titanium white, cool lemon yellow, sap green, light blue violet, dioxazine purple, and magenta. So let's go ahead and go over the brushes we're going to be using today. I'm using my five-piece set of brushes today, starting off with a mop brush. It's got a one-inch here. Then we've got a number 20 flat brush. Then a number 14 filbert brush, a number three round, and a number two rigger. I'm going to start the painting by working on the sky and we're going to approach the sky a little bit differently than we normally do. I want to have the, the main source of light, the sunlight coming in from the far left. So we're going to just work our way out gradiating with the number 20 flat brush to start using white, a little bit of yellow. We're just going to tint our white with a little bit of yellow first. Uh, I'll then start coming in with the light blue, violet and white and then a little bit of purple and white. And then we'll come in and add a little bit of magenta. So again, we're gonna start off with a number 20 flat brush. Just gonna get it a little bit wet and we're gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. So very, very light yellow here. Okay, and then we're gonna start just on the side here And I want you to leave just the little center here, like a half oval shape or a half moon shape, just white, just the, the canvas color, and then start working our way out. I'm going to add a little bit down below. This is going to be a bit of a reflection in the water. So I'm going to turn my brush this way with the yellow and white again, the same buttery color. And we're just going to pull and slide our brush Okay, now let's rinse our brushes out, dry it off, and let's start coming in with a little bit of blue violet, light blue violet, and white. So I'm going to start right about here, and I'm going to follow that same shape. Working my brush strokes out wider and wider. I'm going to pick up a little bit of water, a little bit of water mixed with the acrylic paint will help blend a lot easier. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more white and I'm going to line it up halfway on the yellow and halfway on that blue. This will really help that gradation go from a stripey look to just really softly airbrushed look. Okay, let's take some more of that blue. A little bit of purple now. Mix the two together. A little bit of white in there. The reason why I want to add some white is because acrylic paint always dries a few shades darker than when it's initially first put on. Okay, see how we're going from that soft buttery yellow, a little bit of white canvas showing right there, into soft yellow, gradually into light blue violet, and then into the blue with the purple. 
Let's just continue. I picked up a little bit of water with my paint. Now this area in here is going to be dark forest. So we don't need to go much farther with this light color. However, what we want to do is just kind of go back and kind of scoop it on the end of our brush like this and start coming in with our reflections in the water, just back and forth, leaving a few spaces with that yellow. Now, it might be a little bit hard to tell the yellow areas apart from the canvas, and that's fine. We can always go back later and add a little bit more. And take a little bit more of the purple. This time it's going to be a little bit darker. Using a little bit more purple. Again, just sliding the brush back and forth, side to side. And you don't have to worry about how far you bring it over this way. Because again, we're going to be painting over that. Just want to make sure you have it over far enough. Take a little bit of white in here. Crisscross, pull to blend, and then come back. Add a few more lines. Then a little bit of purple and blue again. And I'm going to add a little bit just kind of down the middle here. Making it darker for some shadows. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take purple and I'm going to start pulling it in from the far right, starting off in the corner here. This is just full strength paint. Your brush might have a little bit of water in it from washing it out. However, you know, a lot of people ask me how much water I've got on my brush. If you have, it's hard to give you the exact amount, it's just a little bit, but if you have uh, drips down your canvas, that's a good indication that you have way too much water. I'm going to scoop up some of my light blue violet now, and I'm going to blend that in. I think this is going to uh, go really nicely with our dark green forest to have this kind of as an underpainting. Now what I'm showing you guys here today is another version of one of my uh, first tutorials that I taught maybe 10 to 12, 10 to 12 years ago, something like that. And uh, it was popular with all the different age groups. So I taught this to um, kids. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white here. I taught this in my kids class. Uh, adults. So no matter, and it was pretty popular. It's a pretty relaxing and tranquil scene. So a lot of people enjoy painting places that they'd like to envision themselves in. Okay, so just coming down the edge here a little bit like this. Take a little bit more purple and I'm just going to turn my brush this way and we want to go up higher than the horizon line. So the horizon line is down here. We're going to add a few little mountains, but up above here, we want to add a little bit more depth 
on either side of where our path is going to be so we can build up some more shadows and have some areas that are going to be standing out a little bit more. So we're just going to come around and you can turn your brush like this with the handle pointing up to the, the ceiling right side up and just kind of travel around with your brush wiggling quickly all the while moving your brush around wherever you want to take it traveling with a brush you decide how you want your path to go. So mine's gonna start from down here. It'll be wider where it starts because it's closer to us. So anything in the foreground is gonna appear larger. Anything distance wise for your perspective will be smaller and fade away. So we'll have a path here, wider, and then it's gonna come into here and then go into here. I like to have a lot of turns and twists when I'm adding paths and roads in my paintings. And then I'm going to have it coming up here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this yellow and white and finish adding a little bit of path, pathway that kind of just disappears up there. And we'll add more to that as the painting progresses. However, I'm just going to rinse my brush off now. I'm going to dry this off quickly, then come in with a small filbert brush, our number uh, 14 filbert brush, this one here, and we'll start adding some clouds and mountains. Okay, so now that this is all dry, we can start coming in and add a few um, clouds here. So I'm going to be using number 14 filbert brush and take a little bit of white with purple and blue now the trick is to not have too much paint on your brush or in your brush so mix the color up that you want and then kind of take some of it off so it's more sort of like a dry brush rather than having big globs of paint on your brush it's going to be really hard to um you know have control over your brush and your brush stroke and what you're painting when you have too much paint in your brush so less is more so what we're going to do is going to we're going to start over here and clouds are really, really easy, especially these ones. I'm going to show you how to paint today. So all you want to do is just start off with a little line like this and then we'll have another one right about here. And by doing so over the, the lightest, brightest part of the painting, we're going to create the most atmosphere um, this way and depth so you need light for shadow and you need shadow for light they need each other and it can create some really beautiful um, mood in your painting and your skies i'm going to put uh, another one just right off the corner here and i'm going to just kind of start to i'm just going in little circles now you can do this counterclockwise or clockwise it doesn't matter push and wiggle on top of that line, get a little bit more paint in my brush. You can start to make them go higher in the center and then maybe smaller and smaller and smaller. I like those kind of just wispy looking clouds. And then I'm going to add another one. Let's add a little friend for that cloud right about here. Just a little one like this. Okay, and let's come down here while we've got this color on our brush and make some mountains. So we'll start off right here, loopy loopy, right down, just kind of weave in and out. Then paint it lightly inside and we'll add another one. Right, and that's right like that. 
then what I want to do is take a little bit of white and blue violet. Let's just mix, mix those up there. And oh, let's just take a little bit more of the purple there. We'll come inside, make it just a little bit softer. Okay, then we've got a few little clouds and some mountains. I'm going to rinse my brush out now. And the next color I'm going to make is just a really light, I'm going to go into this light blue and white and then pick up a little bit of my magenta. And you can see a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to add a little bit more white there, maybe just a little bit of blue. And I'm going to start adding a little bit inside the clouds. So what you want to do is go inside the clouds, leaving them outlined with the first base coat. And it's pretty, you can just kind of pull out like that as well. You can add a little bit, let's be a little bit braver with the magenta. I don't know how much of this might get painted over, but or covered up, but it might be nice to have a little hint of this magenta kind of glowing in between and behind our green forest that we're gonna have. It would look pretty, I think. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of that magenta again not overly mixing and I think I'll just add a little a little something here to the left side of the mountains okay then I want to add a little bit just a teeny tiny bit of white right on the clouds there. Then over with a clean brush to my blue violet. I've got a little bit too much water in my brush, so I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on a towel. A little bit of white and blue. I'm gonna catch the edge of these clouds. You can add as much color and shadow to your clouds as you want. I might just want to add a little bit more depth with my purple here. So see, you can just go back as much as you want, as often as you need to, until you get it right. As long as you don't have too much water or too much paint on your brush, you'll be just fine. It's when we add too much paint that it's kind of hard to go back after. I'm going to add a little bit of purple just to the tops of these mountains, or a little bit of shadow. Go just along the middle and the right, and then gently Sweep to blend with your brush. Okay, now what I want to do is go over this path. So I've got a clean brush. I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow. Yellow and white. And I'm going to go right about here. A little tiny back and forth brush strokes, then pull it over to the left, then over to the right, back over to the left, a little bit more white in there. I'm 
kind of widen my widen my path down here slightly so i'm just going to pull it more towards a line like this lines towards the center of the canvas and back this way and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller I'll just have a little little hint of some some light through there I'm going to add a little bit of magenta in with my yellow and white a little bit more A soft peachy color here and this would be nice I think to just add a little bit of this and around our path so it's not unrealistically all the same color you know and then we can add a little bit as well down here maybe a little bit in the clouds Just a tiny bit more pink and white. Okay, we're ready for the next step. I'm going to start building the height of this hillside up before we add our house. And then we'll add the, the trees back here and then the house and then build up the foliage and fence um, down here in the foreground. So I'm just going to continue using my number 14 filbert brush. And I'm going to take purple with a little bit of green. This will give us a really dark, dark color. And what we're going to do is just start almost pretty much, you could go halfway down your canvas. Halfway down, find the middle of your canvas, and then the middle this way, and then just go over an inch or so from there. So we're just going to start making sort of a blobby, blobby ruffle shape like that. That'll just be for the rocks and the bushes. And then we're gonna bring it in. Paint that in. Come in from this side. You just want to get really close to the path. And then we're going to come in here and come out, come down again. You can slightly go over the path too. That helps to make it look like it's inside whatever's around it on the outer edges. It gives all this more height, these little hills and cliff side. Okay, we're going to come down in here. Again, just using purple and green. I'm going to pull and stretch this out just like we did with a path. I'm 
And then just by turning your brush over like this, it makes it really easy. Okay, so now we've got different sections where there's probably like maybe a little beach or little bays in there. Wash your brushes out. And now we're going to go over to a number three round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and a little bit of white, not over mix. And we're just going to add little half circles and kind of messy square shapes, just for some natural looking rocks and stones. So we can just go down like that. We can layer over and make some smaller up some more paint. Leave some spaces so that you've got some shadows and in depth, okay? Reload your brush when you want to have a nicer, brighter, highlighted rock area. And we're going to have some bushes in here too. Okay, wash your brushes out once more. And let's leave that area for a minute and come over here. We're going to use one inch mop brush. You want your brush to be dry. And what we want to do is just come in with some purple and blue flowers. So just no water at all on your brush. Just tap lightly into your paint, purple and blue. And just tap lightly in here. A few little taps, leaving some spaces. And we can add a little bit here and here around the rocks. A little bit back here. Okay, the next step, coming in and adding some uh, bushes leaves and bushes. I'm going to tap in with my mop brush again. A little bit of green and yellow. I'm going to start back here behind the house and a little bit down the hillside here. A little bit of white and more yellow. Very light, gentle, soft little taps. Let's have some here just kind of spilling over the edge. 
fire path. Get a little bit more white in there, yellow. We need to have a few areas that are more highlighted. Have a little bit going back here, veering off into the woods. And just a little bit more yellow in with that green. And I'm just going to add a little bit of mossy grassy areas down here on part of the path. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just let that settle for now and dry and we can come up and start adding some trees. You'll need your number three round brush. I'm going to take just a little bit of water and purple, a little bit of green, a little bit of magenta, and we're going to have some big branches coming out like this. We want to go with kind of the round background that we have. So we want to follow that and have it kind of feel like it's going along with those lines in the background. Just pull and twist. Again, magenta, green, purple. We'll put another one up there. want to have like a really pretty flower tunnel kind of going around here like an arbor trees with pretty pink flowers that create sort of an arbor back there I think that would look pretty I'm going to use another one inch uh, mop brush. My other two are wet from washing them out, so I need to use another one that's dry for this. So I'm going to take a little bit of purple and sap green. Remember your mop brush is dry, no water, just paint only. And I'm going to start tapping lightly at the top and then a little fuller towards the end of the branches. Again, mix 
dioxazine purple, some sap green. Let's bring that out just a little farther. And so on and so on. Mix the paint up. As you start to run out, rather than trying to push too hard and ultimately getting frustrated. But see how pretty the purple looks in and around and behind these branches. Okay, now I want to take some white, some yellow, and some green. Tap to load so you don't lose that poofy shape. Okay, so we're just going to Continue adding here. I think I might just dry this off quickly. So we're going to ease off with the highlights as they go over towards the right. Up a little bit more white, yellow. Remember to tap to load, keep that poofy shape. A little bit more yellow and white. Let's add a few little tiny dabs, hints of golden sunlit little leaves and bushes down here. I'm going to come around, tap, turn. A little arbor. A light little pull and drag. Maybe for a little bit of grass. We're going to have a little cottage right here. Wash your brush out. And let's go over to our number two rigger brush. Take a little bit of water, a little bit of magenta, yellow, and white. And we're going to add a few little highlights. A little bit of purple. Mix that in. Take some more magenta now and white. A little bit of yellow is okay too. Now we'll start tapping in some flowers and then lightly pulling and flicking just to make it look like they're. And little vines too coming down. And then they're going to be less visible. We're just going to see little bits of pink, just like half circles, little arches like that. I'm 
Kind of add a little bit, a little bit more generous with the magenta. Add a little bit in here. I've got a little bit of the white and magenta in my brush too. So I'm getting a few different tones. So you can take any little brush, you can take your round brush and tap and stipple like this. Remember when painting flowers, it's not important to paint every detail of the flower, every single petal, every single stem, unless that's what you want the full focus of your painting to be. I'm going to take a little bit of magenta, purple, and blue. Tap and dab. Add a little bit of white. Now I just want to take a little bit more on my number 14 filler brush, green, just green only. We're going to come right in here and start to overlap so it doesn't look like the leaves just stopped abruptly right here. So this is going to dry a little bit darker where I added over the purple, of course, and then it'll be a little bit more vivid and saturated where I want it to be over this area that has a bit more white and yellow. Come down here with a little bit of purple and my green. Mix the two together. I'm just going to pull, pull the slide out. Add some shadows across the path. For shadows, you don't want your paint to be too, too thick. Shadows should appear transparent. start with purple and all we're gonna do is start here paint a triangle paint it inside add a line on either side to make a square go across let's just bring the roof line up a little bit higher Go across, down, across, paint it in. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue and purple right away to the roof line. We're just going to go simply like that on one side. Down on the other side, paint it diagonally like that. A little bit more blue. Okay, then we're going to go across. We're just going to pull lines like that. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and green. A 
little bit more purple and blue. This side we want to be darker. Just tap and dab on the corners. Okay, we'll go back to some blue, a little bit of white. Pull a few more lines. You might want to wait and dry your painting off. If you're unable to do this, let's come in and add another layer here on the roof, blue and white. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take a little bit of white and yellow. There's a little bit of magenta in there too, which is fine. You can choose what color you want your light in your windows to be. I'm just going to add a little rectangle there, a little window here. A little bit for the door and maybe just another little window right there. Now, I like lots of windows. I think it uh, makes a place look nice and cozy. It's up to you how many you want. I'm going to add three on this side. And then add a little bit of light coming down right there. I'm going to use a little bit more yellow and magenta. I'm going to paint the door magenta. And go in between those lines. If you happen to paint over them, you can always go back over and I'm going to do that. There's our little magenta door. And the light inside our windows. I think we could add some shutters. We're just going to use some purple and square the windows up a little bit while adding a line on either side. Now I find, find a little round brush to be working for me, but you may feel like, depending on how big your cottage and your windows are, you may feel like you want to use a brush that's a little bit bigger, or you might want to go down a few sizes and go down to like a really small liner brush. I'm going to add a chimney now. I'm going to take green magenta and purple 
and I'm going to add it right here. So I'm going to go above the roof and then down a little skinny rectangle like that. Now there's another color that I want to add. I just want to use a tiny bit of turquoise blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise blue, some white, mix that up. And I'm going to add a little bit of color to the shutters here on either side. I'm going to take a little bit more white, work out some of that paint. I'm going to go from the chimney with a pointy tip of my brush, push, wiggle, 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 and let off. Then I'll take just a little bit of white. Just give a little bit of a highlight on one side of the chimney there and then a little bit of a shadow just with a little bit of that turquoise blue white and purple a little bit of green in there anything that sort of you could make sort of a grayish greenish color Okay, I just washed my brush off and I want to take a little bit more, again, of that dark purple green magenta, outline these windows or re-add some shutters. Possibly add a few little steps down here. And then we're going to add some bushes. You've got a really small mop brush. If you don't have a small mop brush, you can just do the same thing with um, either a fan brush or a filbert brush. And all you want to do is just make sure you're stippling. So just tap, tap, tap. So I'm going to take a little bit of green bit of purple and I'm gonna just catch each corner of the house so we kind of tuck that in a little bit better and make the house look like it's nestled in there okay then over to white a little bit of yellow a little bit of green Tap to load your brush. re-highlight now that it's dry 
or where we might need to make things stand out and be a little bit brighter in color. I'm going to go back over to magenta yellow white with my round brush. Just get a little tiny bit on the tip of my brush and carefully bring some more light inside my windows. And a little bit more magenta, yellow and white. I'm going to go up and over. A little bit of green, purple, and blue. Add a few lines like this on either side of our archways. Take a little bit of purple and green. I'm going to go over to my number two rigger brush and we'll add a few more branches with water, purple, and green. What you want to do is just pull out from an existing branch using the tip of your brush and then twist and roll. I'm going to take another mop brush and I'm going to add a little bit of magenta and blue violet. Come along the edge like this. Oh, we still have to paint our fence. Then we'll be done. A little bit of white. A few more flowers in there. Okay, I'm going to take some yellow and white with my number three round brush. And I'm going to tap in just little dabs here on the side for some light filtering through.
a little bit of purple and green magenta. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a shadow on this side. I'm going to add a little bit of light to the rocks. Just a little bit more blue, white. And now we can start adding our fence. So I'm going to take some white, a little bit of some violet. There's even a little bit of that turquoise in there. We're going to start with the tallest one right here. Go over with a little bit more white, make it a bit brighter. Okay, we'll add another one here. And there. And then make them smaller and smaller. I'm going to take my filbert brush and slide off some of this paint, making them a little shorter and thinner. Just going over with some more white towards the left side. Okay, now I'm gonna take purple, magenta, and green. My brush is clean first, no white left in it. And I'm just gonna catch the right side of each one of these fence posts. And add a little shadow down below, just with a little bit of that dark color, but not so much that it's as solid looking. You don't want it to be opaque, you want it to be transparent.
Okay, now with my liner brush, a little bit of water, I'm just gonna move around. Connect those poles together. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and green dabs. In between, some magenta flowers here. Take a little bit of yellow and white and add a touch of that to the fence post as well. And a little bit more magenta and white. There's a little bit of yellow in there too. We'll finish off with a few more flowers here before we call this done. Dab a little bit of blue in there. I'll take some blue turquoise with my sap green. Add some cool shadows down here, cool green tones. Just little dabs for leaves. And I'll finish this painting off with last highlight, tiny bit of yellow and white on the roof. Don't go over the shadow of your chimney. I'm going to take some purple and blue turquoise and add a little bit, some cool shadows over here. I think this just look pretty. Now I didn't do this in the original one. I'm just tuning in now. I painted, I'm trying to paint something again that I painted about 10 or so years ago, 10 to 12 years ago. take some more purple. I'm just going to add a little bit more shadows down here coming out in the water. Let's take a little bit of blue violet with it just to soften.
a little bit more blue violet just in here. Finally, a few little pink flowers behind the house. Light, light pink. Okay, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this one. And uh, feel free to paint it yourselves. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!